Hi, people uh, who are watching, uh, and hi, I think your name's Sasha. Um, uh, so I just want to give you a, like an introduction, just a short introduction. Um, uh, in the Old Testament, in the Bible, uh, the older part of the Bible, there were people who had the ability that could uh, see the characteristics and personality of a person. They could see the person's past. They could see any event in the person's past. They could see the person's future. They could see the person's destiny. Um, and they're very good at giving direction. Uh, they could, uh, anyone could come to them uh, with a decision or, or uh, plans or, and, and they could discuss their plans and these prophets could just tell them what decisions to make and how to do that. And um, kings, uh, there were prophets, there were notable prophets. And the king of Israel, for instance, would, uh, before he went into battle, before he went uh, to fight an army that was attacking them, he'd consult a prophet and he'd ask the prophet, are they going to win? Or should they um, make a peace deal with the attacking army? And if they do fight, how should they fight? And what's their strategy and how are they going to win? And the prophet would get a vision. He'd have like a dream in his head, like a vision, like you see um, memories in your head. He'd see a vision of, of, the, um, of the battle and he'd see the strategy that God wanted the king to do. And if you you know, read the Bible, I don't think you're a Christian, but if you read the Bible, you'd see that the prophet would say a specific strategy for the army to do. And if the army did that strategy, uh, Israel would win. Um, so um, that's what a prophet was. And then Satan, the enemy Lucifer, you know, a lot of people don't believe he exists, um, but um, he has his own people with the same sort of gifts, same sort of ability, can tell a person's life, can tell a person's past, can tell a person's future. Um, so they have the same sort of gift. and. Um, People like you, most people in the world, and even half the Christian church, um, know these sort of people. They know the clairvoyants and psychics, and clairvoyants and psychics use cards or tea leaves or whatever medium to do a reading, and and uh, that's a prophecy. Well, prophets can do that too, but <clears throat> most people only know what the word reading is, and. Um, normally have to go and pay someone fifty dollars a hundred dollars and they'll give you a reading about uh, your love life your job life uh, different things that they can see in your life uh, you can go into a clairvoyant and ask him you know i'm dating a guy called mark is he going to be my husband am i going to have a relationship with him um, and a clairvoyant a lot of the time can tell you yes that's the man um, the only problem with a clairvoyant instead of getting the information of God, which is a loving, beautiful spirit like Jesus, they're getting the information of a demon who has got ulterior motives and demons lead you into lust, de demons lead you into anger, demons lead you into sexual abuse, uh, de demons lead, lead, every pedophile's got a demon that compels him to do things and stuff. So demons are always got darkness and darkness agenda. So even when they're speaking positive, there's a catch 22. There's a, there's, there's a price you pay for it. And it's not just the price you pay to clear more. Uh, so, but most of the world knows what a reading is. So I just say I do readings so you can get like a mental image that this guy's going to tell me all about my future. Um, well, tell me all about my life. So um, I've never done, two things are different about you, Sasha. Uh, you know, you think you're stunning, you think you're beautiful, you, you think you're a gorgeous woman. Well, you may not think, you may not think. A lot of, a lot of stunning, gorgeous women actually don't think they're stunning, gorgeous or beautiful. Um, but very few people see who you are uh, when they look at you and... Um, they need to talk to you and get to know you to see how exquisite you are. And um, I've got a, like a really strong sense that God moves me in and gives me a sense. And um, it wasn't your pictures 
that did it was how you wrote your profile and what you said. Um, it's what the probably probably one of the top five profiles on that whole website that I've seen. I've seen about four hundred. So I'm a genius. Um, as someone who's bipolar with mental illness, you know they say the the um, the line between genius and and insanity is really thin. Well, when that people are stupid, people are saying that they got no idea that they're explaining bipolar disorder and uh, someone with bipolar can see huge things or think big things or dream big things about the future. And when they're talking about things that are impossible, they're called insane uh, or maniac. Uh, when those impossible things manifest on earth because they persevere over 20 or 30 years, then they're held to be a genius. But uh, many geniuses been in mental asylums before they had their genius stroke. What's there was a painter or something that cut off his ear or something. Sort of insane, but genius. Um, so because, yeah, I'm getting back to this is going to be long. It might be 40 minutes in the hour, hour and a half. Um, and it'll be compelling. So you don't have to worry about that. Glad I don't have to pay for your time for, um, uh, for you to watch this. And, um, I know it'll be very interesting because it's all about you and, uh, and it's all about you, things that you don't know, um, except these first 10. So there's two different, so I've done about 35 of these. There's two things that stand out that make this different to every single one of them I've done. Number one is God wanted me, God talks to me, um, and God is God, the creator of the heavens and earth and all the perfection of creation, all the birds, the bees, the multicolors, the, the 150,000 different um, butterflies and you know, 20,000 different frogs. And, you know, you, you could have five different frogs. If humans did it, they'd say, oh, 10 frogs, that's enough. But, you know, God is extravagant and he just creates, you know. And there may be women in the world that look like you, but, you know, one of them has got uh, nice breasts, one has got little breasts, one's got uh, slightly bigger breasts than you, uh, one's got a tighter butt, one's got a bigger butt. You know, she, her face may look good, but God's a God of design and creativity. And someone who's a genius doesn't just create the same. You only create the same to get your cost down. But you know, any car company that you can go to a company and get a custom car that's unique, that'd be too expensive. So we only have things that are the same and conformed to keep prices down. But God, there's no price, so he's extravagant. And um, so one thing is standing out about you is you're the most exquisite person I've ever done one over. Um, and um, I know that for two reasons. One is he said to introduce uh, my ability so you can get some truth going on because when I talk about your future and what you're going to do, you might not resonate with some of them and think I could never do that. Um, so I'm going to start with 10 character traits that are pretty good about you. Um, and uh, you pretty well haven't mentioned them in your profile, so uh, you, you'll have to consider, where did he get that from? How does he know that? Well, that's my gift, and that's what I can flow in. That's what I earn my living doing. Uh, so I've been doing it for 25 years, so I've got pretty good. So I'm going to do those 10 things about your character, and then instead of, I said I'll do nine things about uh, what you're going to do, this is where it stands out. I've only done nine and 10 uh, ever in the 35 that I've done since I've got this gift. Um, but God's given me 20 things for you. So it's very extensive. And I see you as someone who starts and then delegates, starts, delegates, starts, delegates, starts, delegates. You can do all of the different businesses and start them, but then you put management in and people, I can see you putting people in better than you. So if you ran one of these businesses, one of these things, it would be pretty good. But then you'll find someone better than you at doing that and you'll put them in as management or even co-partner and uh, they'll run that for you and then you'll start the next one. Um, and the best sort of people in the world are good delegators. Someone who's got to be in control of everything is just a messed up, pride, prideful. You know, they can be really wealthy, but if you can't delegate, you're really not as smart as people that can delegate. And you know that uh, intuitively, you know that because I'm talking about it. So I know you can understand that, uh, that the very best exquisite 
most powerful people in the world delegate well. Right? So Steve Jobs created genius, but he also put staff in and was able to delegate. Um, but uh, so, uh, so I've never done 20. I think I've done 12 as the most and uh, 20. And I, I definitely wouldn't do 20 for someone for free. Right? So, um, you know, this is worth 150 for nine. Uh, for, for, for 20 is worth 300. So you owe me $300 already. Okay. So when, when we, um, when we have lunch for an hour, um, I'll have this list of things here and uh, we can open the YouTube video. When you go in the description tag of these YouTube, I'll have the 20, uh, bullet points that I'm talking about, about the things you're going to do. They'll all be listed in the description tag. Uh, so, you have that list or we open up the video and look at that list or I bring my book here and have the list. And um, then we'll talk about each of them and how you're going to do it, how you're going to set it up and sort of like the timing of what year you're going to do that, what you're going to start and you're going to start that and you're going to start that. We'll have a good talk and you can question me anything and um, you can ask me any question that I don't know and I can ask God, how's she going to do this and God will talk to us. Uh, uh, I also envisage that if you want to talk face to face with Jesus and have like question time with God or question time with Jesus, he can come into me and talk through me uh, to you and answer your questions. So um, it's going to be a really exciting date. And I hope at the end of it that you won't want to charge me. You'll just want to spend time with me and be mentored and coached by me because uh, in years to come, you know, I'm going to cost $20,000 an hour to coach businesses and stuff. And uh, I'm going to be, the, the big rage at the moment is life coach and business coach. And, and I'm going to be more exquisite than any of them. Because uh, I won't be coaching people into what they think and what they plan to do. I'll be coaching people into what God planned for them. Now, I'll tell you something Christians know. A lot, not a lot of people know this, but everyone started in the heart of God as a li little ember, a little soul in God's heart, then you come out of that at the right time, just before you're born, and they show you the whole picture of your whole life. They show you a video of your whole life. Then, you know, if you're going to suffer and you have hardship and also, they show you the whole thing. And then as a little spirit, God says, do you want to do that life? Do you sign on for that life? And, um, and the little spirit says, yeah, I want to do that. And if there's a heap of traffic and trauma, like someone in the Illuminati has satanic ritual abuse and horrific torture and stuff, they see all that, but you know, anyway, you choose your life. Anyway, there's, there's a scroll, like the old books used to be a scroll, right? There's a scroll in heaven with these 20 things on. And all I've done is just looked at that scroll and written those 20 things down, which are your destiny things that you saw when you were a spirit before you were born uh, and you know that this is in you. So each of these 20 things, if you meditate on them for a year or two or three years, you'll eventually see your past before you're a child and, and you'll see, yeah, I can do that. Actually, the more I think about that, the more I know I need to do that and the more I know I can do that better than anyone in the world. What people don't know about you is we're very much alike. We're very much turned on by intelligence, genius, and wisdom, and depth. You're very deep. You're very much a genius. You're very intelligent. And, and you know, that's got, you know, your looks have got nothing on who you are inside. And um, I don't think many people see it, but it's, you're very good at describing yourself in your profile, and you're very good at conversation, and so um, I think if a person's open to it and he doesn't think he's too amazing and, you know, he's, he's, too, he's too fantastic and he's not too on himself, if he actually asks you questions and want to actually get to know you, you find that your, um, your, the magnetism on you is just like totally magnetic. You're, you're, so, you're so beautiful, you're, you're so exquisite, that I wouldn't want to taint you, I'll taint myself having sex with you. I just, it would just destroy my, my, 
pride of you. And the other thing is, I'd rather you see me as a real father, not a sugar daddy, but someone who's like an uncle or, or father or just an older friend or an older brother. Something totally platonic, but someone that you said to yourself that um, you know, really admired you. So that was a long introduction. I don't know how long we're going, but um, I think you needed that because you don't really understand uh, what this is so much more than just a clairvoyant reading, right? So here's the 10 points I wrote down, but I mentioned about six of them just before, so you can count them too. Number one is you're very punctual. You hope other people are punctual, really annoys you because if, if, you're, if you're, you're normally 20 minutes, half an hour early for appointments, you always, you always got 10 or 15 minutes where you're waiting for the actual appointment. So um, I'm pretty sure that I could turn up at that cafe um, at, at quarter two and you'd be there. Um, but um, you definitely don't come at five past and 10 past and 20 past the hour very punctual um, and uh, in business that is really powerful because uh, some people are on thousand dollars an hour and five hundred dollars an hour and lawyers and stuff and uh, if you spend five minutes of their time with them waiting you've just blown fifty dollars worth of their time and if they're not getting paid for that that's really annoying having people that aren't unpunctual so um you know, one of the main facets of being a tremendous business person is being punctual and not ever wasting anyone's time. You're very, uh, you've got integrity. What you say is what you get. Uh, because I've seen this in, in, in this uh, uh, thing, I, do think, I know when I said I want a friend, I don't want to be your client. I don't want to be someone you earn money off. I don't want someone, I don't want you thinking you're going to earn money off you, off me. I want, I want a friend. And, and if you become my friend, I'll, do, I'll, I'll just travel with you for the rest of your life as a friend and I'll make you into a billionaire, you know? And, uh, and although these are all different to my scroll and, and, and my destiny, uh, certainly in a few years' time, in 10 years' time, I'll have all the money to fund all of this for you. Um, but um, you're going to generate all this income to fund yourself. But we'll be a very good friends and we'll go and rock the world together and hopefully travel the world together. Um, so you've got integrity. What you say is what you get. When you've said, I'll be a good friend to you, I'll be a friend, I, I won't treat you like a client, I won't be... I trust you I trust you saying that when you said it to me and I trust you because it's here you've got integrity. So you say what this... You, pro you don't promise things and not do it, right? Um, you're honourable. You honour people. People who, who deserve honour, like your mother, your father, your uncle, your teacher, your professor, uh, the police, the government. Um, you even honour the government you don't like. So I don't know if you're conservative or liberal um, or labour or liberal. You know, I use American terms. Um, I'd, I'd send you more conservative, but I don't care if you're a Labour voter. Like, you know, a lot of liberals, the American term, a lot of liberals have just got bleeding, beautiful hearts. Um, so um, they're just misinformed in some things. Uh, a lot of things, the liberals are misinformed. There's a lot of uh, things that suck about conservatives. So, um, so uh, but you're honourable. My point is, that uh, you would honour who's ever in government, even if you don't admire their politics, you'd still honour the office. Um, you're fiercely loyal. I see like, um, like a mother bear has got a cubs. If you come anywhere near her cubs, she'll kill you, right? Um, the same as if anyone wants to do over one of your loved ones or someone you care about, you'll, you'll do them over. And, uh, I don't say you're violent. I don't say you move in witchcraft. I can't see any witchcraft on you. Um, but, um, but if you were a witch, you'd knock them out. Right? Um, but uh, you're fiercely loyal and uh, a person doesn't want to mess with someone you love because you mess back with them. Um, plus, no matter if they're going through cancer, if they're going through rape, if they've been raped, uh, if, if anything traumatic has happened to someone you love, 
Uh, you'll be at their bedside, you'll be doing their shopping, you'll be giving them money, you'll be doing whatever you need to do to help them through that. Fiercely loyal, right? You'll even drop everything you do, drop your income, drop your country, move countries to go and look after someone you love. Fiercely loyal. Um, it's just so beautiful. It's just so rare and so beautiful. Um, and you could be fiercely loyal to me in six months and you meet me six times and let's say we're meeting for free or I'm meeting and I'm paying you $200, the absolute privilege of knowing you. Um, but after six months, I, your life would be so transformed with my uh, ability and some of the things I've said to you that you, you'd go, you know, someone posted an article or something on, on, on TV or something, you, you'd, you'd go and ring the manager and say, you got no idea who he is. You need to pull that article or I'm going to sue you for everything you got. And if you had a law firm, you would do it for me. Um, you, no one wants to cross one of your friends um, uh, when you got the power and the authority and the money. Uh, they'll just absolutely be wiped out. So that's uh, really scary, but people ha don't know. And I don't know if you know you got this in you. Uh, but you can be a very bad enemy to someone who crossed someone you love. Um, so I really love that. It's a real tiger, you know. Um, compassionate. Um, uh, I'll get emotional about this one because this really, um, this really uh, makes me really love you heaps. Um, Jesus got all his power from his compassion, right? So um, one day... His uh, cousin died and he got the news and his cousin was the person who announced him. So you know how someone um, uh, uh, discovers someone and gives them a stage, like Justin Bieber got discovered by a musician. A musician got rang up about him. The musician tuned in and started listening. Then that musician went and got him, coached him, gave his contract and fathered him and mentored him into who he is, right? So... The person who announced Jesus, who made Jesus who he is, told the whole world about who he is. The person that built the platform for Jesus died one day. His followers, his disciples, came and said, your cousin, and it happened to be Jesus' cousin. Uh, Jesus' cousin died and his main prophet died who announced him. And Jesus went off to cry, right, and have a talk to God, his father, and, and he just wanted to weep. Well, he crossed on this boat and there were thousands of people there knowing that he was coming. And uh, it said that he had compassion on them and healed all the sick. Well, people don't really realise the momentous thing that was because later on they were hungry after he's taught them. He, he healed all the sick. Then he sat down and taught them because everyone wants to hear him speak. And even when you're hearing this speak, it's very engaging and very interesting. Jesus was like five times more... Uh, interesting than me and he was addictive to listen to so he preached so long everyone got hungry and Jesus said let's feed them and they said we've got no food we've just got five loaves and two fish as this young guy's given us Jesus said give it here and he said now hand it out and as they handed it out it duplicated itself there was 5,000 men there and women and children 10,000 people there and five bread and two fish fed these 10,000. All the Christian church can talk about is what a bloody big miracle that was, right? They don't realise that he healed about a 1,000 out of that 10,000 had sickness. In those days, there was no medications and stuff or hardly anything, right? He healed about a 1,000 people, laid hands on them, a 1,000, healed all their sick, fixed all that, fed 10,000 people. But it was his saddest day. All he wanted to do was cry, right? So if he healed a thousand people, would have taken a couple of hours, he talked for 10 hours, he fed everyone, then he sent everyone away, he said, go away. He said to his disciples, go away, go and sail in the boat. And he went up onto a mountaintop and wept. And that's all he wanted to do when he left and withdrew, that's all he wanted to do was go and weep and talk to his dad and get some information. And I'm just getting information from Jesus, like Jesus talking to his dad. All this information is just coming from Jesus through me to you. 
right? And if you wanted him to speak, I'd get him to speak. Um, but I'd just speak. You'd probably be more comfortable. So he did all that miracle, all that healing through his compassion. Um, compassion was like the petrol in his car. You know, you can't run a car without petrol or you can't do big things in this world without compassion. And if you've got heaps of compassion, there seems to be no depth to your compassion. Um, if I met you in the flesh, I'd probably cry at how beautiful you are and how much you care. And uh, very few people that you've ever met, I don't know if anyone ever cares as much as you care for the brokenhearted, for the poor, for the hurting, for, the, for, for all the broken, hurting, starving, suffering people in the world. You, 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 if you got, had $10 billion and, and $10 billion could fix the whole of the continent of Africa, you just throw that $10 billion at it and fix it. you got no problems. I don't think you've got any desire to be rich and wealthy. Uh, if, if the broken heart is still starving, it would break your heart, you know. So, uh, so this is going to be long. I don't care. You can watch this in three sessions over the next week. And I don't care how long I take. And I'm not going to shorten it just for time. So I think this will be really engaging. And um, in one of our meetings, we'll have it all typed up and we'll be able to read it. But uh, you're highly intuitive. So um, this gift comes from my intuition. Your spirit, your spirit, you've got a spirit, soul and body. Your spirit is the eternal part. Your soul is your mind and emotions. And your body is this big fat thing in me, but this beautiful, stunning thing in you, right? So anyway, I went on medication and put on 50 kilos over 20 years. So, um, you know, that's a bit annoying. Um, if I take the medication, stop taking the medication, I'll go crazy, but keep taking the medication, I keep on getting fatter. I only have one meal a day, crazy enough, isn't it? Be so fat, one, one meal a day, crazy. Um, they put you on the medication to stop mania and depression, and you get so fat, you get depressed. So when you get depressed, you've got a choice. You can be a happy fat man or a funny fat man. You can be a funny fat man or a sad one. So I decided to be a funny one. So... Um, but you're highly intuitive. Now, your spirit is where your intuition is. And you're very intuitive. Uh, another way of saying that is you, 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 get, the, you get the gist. You, you're very good at reading between the lines on what someone's saying. Someone's saying some subtle humour or some subtle irony or some subtle rebuke or some subtle, subtle mockery or subtle anything. You, you pick up the noyance, the noyance or whatever that word is, you'll pick up the undertone of anything that's being said in writing or in speech, you know. Some people, you know, nine out of ten people, some people are such good communicators at giving insults that only one in ten will people will see the insult except the person that's being said to. So um, you can read stuff, so you can read people so well um, and... Uh, it's very helpful meeting totally strange guys because you can sort of meet and within five minutes pretty well sort them out and tell them stuff about themselves. Um, and it's my intuition, someone who's highly intuitive can be, become very good like me. I can pray for you and I can have train you to become as good as me. And um, it's actually one of your points in here that you're going to do that. So um, it was interesting to hear that. Number seven... You're honest, real, and genuine. So I can totally trust you on that. I can totally trust you now that I can see that. Anything you say, anything you say to me has got a reason and it's real. And if I ask you to be real, be yourself, don't hide anything, don't try and play a game on me or try and give me a sad story or try and uh, get me for more money, just, just tell me, Matthew, I need $500 in the next week. I've got, uh, you know, a rent or I've got something coming coming on and I need $500 if you can get it to me. Yeah, here's 500 Here, have it. But if you're trying to play a game on me, trying to play a con on me, um, you would never do that because you're real, genuine and, and, and honest, right? And uh, in the future, for the rest of my life, if I ever... If you ever need money and I've got it, I'll give it to you because you are who you say you are, right? You're transparent. Um, if you read any of my 55 books, 
you'll see that I illustrate all the time with my own life and a story. And I'll throw myself in the American term, I'll throw myself under the bus. I'll tell people that I had porn addiction all my life, prostitution addiction all my life, a low self-esteem. I'll tell them any bad thing about myself to illustrate my point. And someone like that is just so believable because they've got no shame in saying anything bad about themselves. And uh, you not only say the bad things, but you'll be transparent about everything, you know? I really, I really would love this world if we didn't have to vote for politicians. If there was some way of running our country without blooming politicians, I'd, I'd back that way. These stupid, lying, deceitful politicians on both sides, I really haven't got any time for them. And you would say that on public TV, in, on 60 Minutes, they ask you about a certain politician. You say, oh, actually, it's not just him. It's all politicians. Politician is, is one of the most evil, wicked things in the world. And if some way we could run governments without politicians, I'd be all in for that. And you'd have no problems, like totally destroying your reputation among so many people. Uh, but you wouldn't. You'd be a hero saying that. But um, you're so transparent. You don't care about how honest and what you have to say to get action or to put leverage on a person. And you wouldn't put leverage on a person in any evil way, but to build leverage. So if I say four times I've been on the way to kill myself, and I said that in a video today, in a five hour video I did, um, four times I've been on the way to kill myself and four times I've been stopped. Well, that impresses a few people, but everyone who's suicidal, they can't believe it. Here's a guy, that was going to kill himself four times. And he's saying it, and he's proud to say it, he's not ashamed to say it. Man, he, he must have some answers for me. Maybe he can give me some hope. Um, so transparent can bring leverage into a person who's suffering the same way, like no psychology book, like no psychologist, not like no counsellor, like no doctor, like no friend. Being transparent can just, boom, build leverage, right? Here's the one, you're a risk taker, bold and adventurous. So I can see you abseiling, I can see you jumping off cliffs on those kites, I can see you uh, in a glider, I can see you uh, getting shot out of a cannonball with a, you know, one of those cannons with a thing on. Uh, if it's fun and it's risky, if uh, I can see you um, uh, washing windows just for the fun of it, just to learn, just taking the risk. You, you're sort of so bold and adventurous and you're a risk taker. And, and it's a good thing because the risk taker part is to be a really exceptional entrepreneur, you've got to take risks. And uh, that risk taker and that bold character and that adventurous character is really good for high level business. Uh, to have that in place for business, that's one of the best characteristics that you can have for business. Um, Number 10, you're dependable and you're a truth teller, right? So, um, so they're two different ones, but they actually work together. So people, I've got a feeling you've got a really good circle. I've, I've, I've got a sense, I don't know everything. So here's another thing. I can't see anything in you that God won't show me. God, if you're private about certain things, you don't, want certain things revealed about yourself uh, and you can be private, a lot of people are. I don't think you are, but if there's things you don't want revealed or me to know, God will never show me those things, right? So you can be confident, you don't have to be scared that I can see everything. If you're um, uh, masturbating three times a week and you really enjoy it, you're feeling guilty about it, uh, for instance, God can never show me that, right? I can never know that uh, supernaturally by God, but a, but a clairvoyant can tell you um, because they can be wicked. Um, so a demon would expose that because a demon would know, um, but, um, but God would never reveal it, even if it is true. But you're dependable. You're really dependable. And that's about your loyalty and honourable and your integrity. Integrity and your honourable and, uh, and your loyalty uh, uh, makes you dependable and you're a truth teller. You like to repeat truth 
and you like to say truth and you like to share truth and you like to make the truth be known. Okay, so that's you. Now, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a prostitute that I've been, I've been spending a lot of money to spend an hour with, a lot more than 200, and I did 50 of those on her. And uh, as we build a relationship and you get to know us and you, you come to really love me um, and really love me, not in love with me, but love me like a brother or father or mother, I'm never going to be your husband. So you may even fall in love with me. And, you know, I, I could imagine any girl could with my gifts um, and how giving I am. Um, uh, we'll just list another 10 really quick, but I won't explain them. Uh, I'll just list another 10 just for fun. You're very giving, you're very charitable, you're very uh, uh, loyal, you're very, um, very uh, uh, creative, you're very, uh, you're a big dreamer, uh, you live in a dream world sometimes, but you can, uh, you can bring back reality. Um, you're very, uh, very, um, you're very hard worker and you're very willing to do the research and you're very um you put uh 500 percent in uh and you do everything you can with excellence so that's another 10 so uh, you'll have to watch the video to do that because i haven't got them written down radio so here's the 20 things you're going to do and um that was just to build trust in you now if i got one of them wrong just you know um just say that's a ball that, um, that uh, I was meant to hit as a cricketer, but it went past me. So I, I missed one. Uh, so don't worry about it. If I, I should have got most of them right or all of them right. Um, but these, that was just to build some trust in me that I know things about you that there's no way I could have known. So you, you're experiencing a miracle now or something supernatural. Right? You might... Uh, I think you've got a really good self-esteem. I think you're very confident. I think you're very um, centred. Normally you get centred and, and happy with who you are in your own skin around 30. I think you're centred now. I don't know, um, may, maybe people call you an old soul, but you're bloody, you know, I'm 52 and I don't think I'm as together as you and you're 23 and you're just like a, you know, you're, you're headed for the stratosphere. Um, so, um, so number one, you're going to own, operate, and have an exquisite modelling agency, right? Now, there's going to be a couple of standout features of that that no modelling agency can get near, right? I don't know what they are but it's not because you have the most pretty models, right? Because it'll be other features that um, uh, we can work out. I can't get it now, but uh, so you, you, as a model, you know what an agency is. Um, I'd imagine that there could be pretty crappy agencies and very, very, <laughs> good agencies and exquisite agencies. Uh, as a model yourself, I don't know which agency you are, but every model seems to need an agency. Um, but I don't know, there might be freelance models. I don't know anything about models. In fact, you'll be the first model I ever sat down with and had a, um, <coughs> had a um, coffee with and got to know. And it would be really exciting to have a model as a friend. But um, I have got an article called <coughs> True love, why is that stunning girl dating that ugly guy? And I've got a lot of understanding into very pretty girls. Um, I will say Mary Magdalene, out of the Bible, which was Jesus' friend and a former prostitute, um, she's one of the most exquisite looking women in the universe. And um, I've met her in visions, like a ghost, and talked to her 400 times. And um, uh, she's a very, very close friend of mine. And um, she's exquisite and she make any, you know, most models in the world look pretty plain. And, um, but she's got so much spirit of love and compassion and understanding and giving and all these beautiful character traits in her 
that her inside just outshines her outside and she's one of the most exquisite females in the universe and um, she was Jesus' best friend, actually. She was the only one that understood Jesus when he was on earth and she used to ask him questions and, and he'd cry on her shoulder and weep and weep and weep and she was the only one that understood. You're another Mary Magdalene and I know her so well and I've written three, four, I've interviewed Mary Magdalene four or five times and I've got three full books about Mary Magdalene being interviewed by me. And I, I'll even buy you those paperback books and you can read them if you're interested to find out more about who you are. Right? So uh, you're going to run a modelling agency and it's going to just be hard for you to receive. It's going to be one of the best in the world. And, uh, and it won't just be Australian, it'll be international. So that's enough for any normal girl. That's enough for you to do, but you're going to be a good delegator and you're going to start things, move on, start things, move on, start things, move on, right? You're going to have an acting studio. Um, Dad, that's not, I got something stuck in my tooth, so it's distracting me. I don't know so much what an acting studio is, but whatever it is, um, you're going to have an acting studio, uh, a sort of, it's, I don't know if I've got the word wrong there. Um, I sense it's a place where actors, maybe, maybe the word is acting school. Sometimes I'll get something wrong. It's, it's, it's wherever actors go and learn to act, where, wherever that is that they act and learn to act and learn the craft of acting, method acting and the other sort of acting. There's two sorts of acting apparently. Um, you're going to run that place that trains actors, right? Because you're more than a model, you, you know that you could act really well. And um, because you know you could be a good actor and if you're given the opportunity, you would be a good actor or actress. I call everything in the male. I don't use female terms. So because um, you'd be a good actor and you could be a good actor, um, you'd be able to run a good actor's studio and put good teachers in who teach good acting. You're going to own, I don't know what your fashion stylist is. I don't know, is that a hairdresser or someone who, who, um, who actually picks all the designs for a fashion label or, or actually um, gets all the different um, clothes for, for a runway show. I don't know what a fashion stylist is, so I, I couldn't speak into that one, but you're going to do these 20 plus that one, obviously, because you're training for it. Um, no one's ever told you these 20, so you've got no idea that you're meant to do all this. You, your fashion stylist is just one little bit of what you're going to do. Uh, no one really tells you that you can do 20 things in the world. Um, <clears throat> you think you've got to pick one. So you're going to have an acting training school, acting college, perhaps. You're going to run a fashion label. And I've got S there, so fashion labels. So you're going to run a few fashion labels. You're going to own and run fashion labels. Um, so um, as a model, you probably understand fashion. And you probably understand what you like the fashion. Uh, Princess Diana... Uh, was a really good model, a free model that all the you know fashion labels sent the clothes to be seen on Diana, and uh, it was worth a lot of money to get a shop with one of their clothes on them. And uh, Diana modelled the best clothes in the world, and labels fell over themselves to get Diana to wear them. Well, in heaven. Princess Diana has her own fashion label and is a fashion designer in heaven. And, um, and uh, so that's amazing. I've got a video where I'm talking about that, or John Lennon is, and uh, he's gone into uh, Princess Diana's and explaining her like three bedrooms full of clothes. Um, so she's, she's, she, she wore the best fashion on the world. She understood fashion. And so when she went up there, she became a fashion designer one of the fashion designers of heaven. 
So because you're a model, you understand clothes and good clothes, and you've got a good understanding of good fashion, and you're not only just going to have your own fashion label with a fashion designer running it, fashion, fashion, fashion designers working in it and creating the label and creating the fashion, but you can have multiple labels, right? Um, number four, somehow you're going to pick up the knowledge somewhere uh, that you're going to be an internet marketer. So there's things like building websites, search engine optimization, which is like getting your website under a search word on the first page of Google. So you're going to understand, you don't even have to understand this. You can just be business savvy. You're like a, like a true amazing business person who understands what SEO is, search engine optimization, understands what a good website looks like and understands Facebook advertising, Google advertising, AdWords advertising, and um, understands the whole internet marketing system. Because because of your companies, you've used good stuff, and so you know what's good and you know what's excellent, and um, soon enough you start your own in-house marketing rather than hiring out to marketers, and you get so good at that that you open up your own company who does internet marketing for other companies. Right, so that's going to be one of your company. Now, this is going to be more of a habit, a hobby <laughs> habit. Yeah. I don't think you've got any drug habit, which is amazing for someone uh, that uh, moves in that. Um, a lot of models I've heard uh, have got drug problems and stuff, but um, to keep slim and diets and stuff, but I don't think there's anything wrong happening in your life or any addictions or anything, maybe coffee. Maybe Facebook, I don't know. Maybe this Sugar Daddy website, you're a bit addicted to that. Maybe, who knows. Um, but I can't see anything bad in your life. Um, but then there could be. And if there is, and God doesn't want it on this video, he wouldn't tell me. So that's how it can be private. But I don't think you've got really any bad issues in your life. Um, but I could be wrong. But this would be more of a hobby, number five. You're going to become a good photographer. I think you're just going to do this for relaxation and fun. And I can see you doing scenery and landscapes and everything. But as a model, you're going to be paid a lot of money to do commissioned photos. So important, heavy-hitting people are going to have you come and do their commissioned photo with their dog, with their wife, with their girlfriend, with their son, with their daughter, with their favourite golf shirt, with their favourite golf clubs, whatever they want in the photo you're going to be able to take exquisite photos like they want at a really high standard and at a real heart big price. Uh, that uh, you come and take the shot and present them with five uh, looks and they say that one and uh, you give them that frame shot to put in their mansion. And these are like high level people, multi-millionaires, billionaires that you're doing their commissioned uh, shot that they want of their mother before their mother dies or whatever, you know. You'll even do events and and take shots at events. <clears throat> the paparazzi would be there taking shots and everything, but you'll be like Trump had his own photographer, right, uh, on his campaign and he wrote a book and it was a very interesting book, the inside story of how Trump sort of treats everyone and you might really hate Trump and I really love him, um, and uh, we could be so opposite on that, but there's so many things I love about you, I wouldn't care about your politics. Um, and a really person who's really got their own love and self-esteem and confidence, they really don't care about someone else's politics because, you know, it takes, it's some, that's something that's really ingrained and it takes a lot of research and, and ability to look at truth to see that both sides have got their good points and bad points. And the real people, and you probably know all about this, the real people that run the show, the Illuminati and the Masonic Lodge behind them that control both sides, and basically control the world and control everything, right? Um, one of my major assignments is put those bastards out of business. Um, and I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, this may scare you, but... Um, 
there's millions and millions of angels that I can send and do something. The last election was won because I dispatched angels to turn that election. And you may think that's crazy. You're allowed to think that's crazy because that's sort of crazy talk. Uh, but when these angels turn up, millions of them, the first assignment I sent to is, is to go and turn it for the undecideds for the Liberal Party. And the only reason, or the multiple reasons, because I'm conservative at heart, but the main reason I turned it is the Liberals were going to build stadiums and in a few years' time we need big stadiums to handle the amount of people that are going to become Christians in those stadiums. Um, so people like you. Um, so uh, you're going to commission photos. Now, you're going to be so good at business, at marketing, at branding, at developing business, at financing business, at putting training systems in business, putting uh, PR management in, around business and advertising in business and stocking businesses and, and cash flow businesses and economics in business and, and staff training and staff equipping and staff, right? everything, every facet of businesses you're going to be very good at. And because you're going to be very good at business, you're going to be a business coach and you're going to run coaching for businesses and you're going to coach businesses how to improve in every different facet of their business. You're going to be able to come and spend time with your business and I'll be paying you a lot of time and money and you're going to be able to go into the business and just double their profits or double their, half their expenses or, or build their brand or build their... Um, stock price or build whatever needs to be built. So you're going to be a business coach and you're only a good business coach when you're very good at business. Um, I'm going to be one of them too. So, um, And you're going to be a personal development coach. So um, another way of saying that is you're going to be a life coach and I'm going to be very good at that too. Um, so you're going to uh, be able to do one of these that I'm doing here, I'll teach you how to do this. You'll be able to do one of these, and then you're gonna be able to coach people, like I'm gonna coach you into this over the years to come. You're gonna be able to do what I do, do these, and then coach people personally into their destiny, like I'm gonna do with you. And um, so this is why I look at your price and look at, you know, you charge this per hour and per this and now. How much, how much would, how much do you want to charge me if, I, if I've got the ability not only to see you do this, but show you each step to get all this done? Are you going to charge me $200 an hour to meet with me? Or we're just going to be friends and I'm going to do this for fun with you for practice so that in years to come when people are coming to me, I can say, well, you know Sasha Baldwin or whatever your full name is, do you know Sasha Baldwin who owns this? 15 companies, yeah, well, I coached her. So I got a reference on my website, uh, the coach that coached these people. And it'd be 15 people like heavy hitters in the world and people will bounce onto my website and say, holy shit, she owns those three blimmin' labels that are rocking in Australia, rocking the world. She owns that modelling agency that's just knocked the world over. She, she, you know, she does marketing. She, I've seen the photographer, you know, they're going to know all your businesses and they're going to say, holy hell, this Matthew coached her? You're like, who the hell is he? I've never heard of him. And um, so... For that, for that reference, I put in all my time and all my life and all my experience and everything and it started charging you $500 an hour or, or $1,000 a month or $20,000, like a good business coach can charge $20,000 a month for a CEO or a company. Um, instead of charging you anything, I'll just be your friend. And until you realise how good I am, I'll pay you $200 a day until you realise, hey, I'm not going to charge Matthew and you. Me and Matthew are going to be business partners and we're going to start some of these businesses, go management in some of these businesses. We're going to run some of these businesses together and then we're going to whatever. I don't know the future. But I've got no agenda with you. I don't want to see you for free just to see you for free. I don't want to marry you. I don't want to own you. I don't want to control you. 
I don't want anything. I just want to know you because you're exquisite. You're one of the most exquisite females I have ever seen in my life. And we're only, you know, up to number six and we've got 20 to go. And, you know, I have never, ever, ever met a woman that reminds me of Mary Magdalene. I'll tell you, Mary Magdalene, every single person that you've ever heard in the Bible answers to Mary Magdalene in heaven. Besides Jesus, she's the most important person in heaven. You got the most important person in heaven besides Jesus, the Son of God and God. The, most, the, the, the next most important person that runs heaven is a woman. Right? And this exquisite woman is my best friend. And I think you're one of those women on this earth. And I, I really think from what I can see so far in you, I think you're going to be one of the wealthiest, biggest, most powerful, heavy hitting women in the world that the world has ever seen. And uh, Diana was nothing compared to who you're going to be. Um, and that I may have uh, reached too much for you, for your head right at the moment. So you pull that back. You know how a chef cooks with six dishes at once and he put a stew over the back to simmer for five hours. It's, it's, just, it's just simmering there, right? So when I said you're going to be this Mary Magdalene heavy hitter, biggest, most important woman, richest woman in the world, you just put that over there to simmer. You don't have to believe it, but in 20 years when it's happened, you say, holy shit, Matthew was right about that. Right. Um, that's why I got such a heavy hit on you, prepared to pay you just to meet you, prepared to do something. And then when I went to give the nine, it just kept on going to 20. And then it showed me, hey, this is the biggest thing I've ever done in my life out of 35. It's the very biggest. And um, when I think you were impressed when I said I was going to be a billionaire. Um, and here's the impressive thing. It's not on here. In character track, money's nothing to you. Money's not your God. If if you could totally take the poverty out of Africa, if you had the skill set and the finances and the business savvy and and uh, and and, uh, and uh, growing plants and marketing and farming and all sort of subsistence living sort of uh, understanding and knowledge to totally eradicate poverty in Africa. All of these 20 things, if you could do all of these 20 things and more, there's 50 of them, there's not just 20. Um, if you could do all of these things to generate $1 billion a week or $1 billion a month or $1 billion every year or whatever, right? Well, uh, Zuckerberg was, Facebook was $90 billion in value and Zuckerberg was $45 billion and he's built that up over 20 years or something. So it's quite possible to generate a billion dollars of wealth a year. Um, but if you could do all this to generate huge cash flow just to totally eradicate poverty in Africa, you'd do all of this just for that. So I know you. You've got no wealth is good to you but it's only good in the good that it can do. You're not someone who just store it all in the bank and go around in the wealthiest clothes and the wealthiest things, right? For the sake of it. And you wouldn't never become evil and start doing evil to get more money. Um, I'm just totally amazed uh, with you. Um, and now I'm starting to wonder why I've got such a strong pull to you. And uh, it's got absolutely nothing to do with what you look like. It's got to, all to do with who you are. And no one has ever seen you like me, I'm sure. So I don't want to, well, I don't care how long it is. You can watch it over five days, half an hour a day. I don't care if it's three hours. My longest has been two hours. So if we go over to two hours, it's going to be longest. Um, but that was one for one of the hugest ministries in the world. So, number personal development, so a life coach. Number eight is a seer prophet. Now, I'm a prophet and I'm pretty good, and I'm a seer. A seer is someone who can see visions, see uh, departed people or angels or Jesus in my room. 
and they're all around here. When I was talking about Mary Magdalene, she's in heaven and she's here at the same time. Uh, Mary's standing here smiling, right? And if you are a seer, I could turn that camera around and you could see her just like I see her. And um, so that, um, that prostitute that I'm sort of dating, um, young girl, I introduced her to Mary Magdalene and she saw her and conversed with her on, on the first time I met. So I can open that up and I can introduce you to Mary Magdalene. So if someone sees powerfully, can go to heaven, see angels, see the supernatural, see in the fourth dimension, in other words, um, someone who can see in the fourth dimension and who can do what I do as a prophet, um, you're going to be both of them. So one day you're going to so love me, you're going to so love Jesus in me, you're going to so love my love, and you're going to so love my form of religion, which is no religion. You're going to so in love with me, love me so much, and even if you fall in love with me, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to so love who I am that one day you say, I just want to be like you, and I don't care if I going to be a Christian because you're the furthest thing from a hypocrite Christian that I've ever known and I want to be like you so everything I can do in this gift you'll be able to do um and no life coach no like no life coach out there no matter how good he is can do these 20 things of a person's destiny he can't see that he can only he can only help them do what they think they want to do or what they've decided to do. A lot your thing, fashion stylist, you thought you're going to be a model and a fashion style. Because the world teaches you you can only do two things. Number nine, as you generate massive wealth, that modeling agency is going to, uh, that modeling agency and the fashion labels um, is going to generate a lot of cash. Right. Um, then you're going to be a shark tank if you've seen the show Shark Tank. Um, if you haven't seen Shark Tank, you're, um, it's called like an angel investor, someone who comes and invests in startup businesses and takes a partnership in them, becomes their banker, provides some money, provides some counsel, provides some leadership, provides some business savvy and gets a share and percentage of that inventor or that creator or that person's product and that person's business. So you sort of partner in other people's businesses, but you take a percentage of their profit. So there's all sorts of great business ideas starting in the world and they present their business idea to you. And if you see merit in it, because you're risk taker, because you're so savvy in business, you can make their business idea flourish. It can make a lot of money out of that. But you won't be doing that for money. You'll be doing that to give back. Just like I want to be the person who gives to you, right? And one day you'll be giving to other people because you'll remember what I did for you uh, for free when I should start charging you $500 now. So we'll do, we'll do a deal, okay? I won't charge you $500 now and you don't charge me $200 now. But until you're convinced that I'm really as good as I am, I'll just pay you $200 an hour uh, for lunch or $200 for a meeting, whether it goes for two hours, one hour, two hours. We'll just say that, one hour, two hours, whatever. You just love being with me and I hope that one day you love being with me so much that uh, you just want to be with me and ring me and talk to me all the time and uh, be this awesome friend that loves you, that desires you, that backs you, that any finances he's got will give to you, support you all the way for nothing, for nothing except the fact that my personality, if you look it up on Myers-Briggs, is ENFJ and, and I get my most enjoyment out of other people getting their dreams, coaching people into their destiny, mate, turns me on. So you're, gonna, you're never going to sexually turn me on. I can sit in a, in, a, in a strip joint all day and watch naked people. I can have naked girls dance all over me and not get an erection. You, you, can, you could model your lingerie. You could walk through my kitchen naked. You could take your clothes off and try and seduce me. And you would never, ever see me get sexually aroused over you. And um, 
that's just a gift I have. It's not that I can't, but it's only when I'm in love that I can. And um, so, so you're going to be a, uh, you're going to have, you're going to, you're going to have like a real consultancy business raising up other businesses, and um, you make plenty of money doing that. Um, I'm going to be doing that in a major way in the world, um, and um, and you you make good money doing it, but it won't be about the money. It'll be helping them, and a lot of the businesses are going to be sort of eco-friendly, beautiful businesses that aren't takers but givers, and so you're going to finance a lot of really good ethical sort of business, um, and you're going to finance them and build them and make them successful. So number 10 is your fashion stylist. So you know what that is. That's one of the things you're going to do. Um, number 11, you're going to be a real estate broker. So you're going to start buying so much real estate that you're going to be really savvy in what is good real estate and you're going to be have a good understanding of the growth areas and the things that are trending and the sort of buildings that are trending, the ones that are getting older that aren't trending anymore, the things that are art deco 40 years ago and they're really trending in money. And you're going to have a real savvy, excellent spirit when it comes to be able to seeing the value and the future values and what can really grow, what won't grow, what will stagnate and you're just going to be an expert, such an expert investing in property yourself that one day you'll be a real estate broker who will be like a real estate firm who will just broker amazing, huge properties with huge potential. And people will start coming to you slowly and then in a big way uh, to do all their exchanges and all their buys and selling a property. Um, <clears throat> so... I'd imagine, I don't know if it exists, but rather than like a billionaire or multi-millionaire, I'm more impressed with billionaires since I know Trump had billion and then he bought an election for himself. I, I like to do that with, <laughs> imagine being able to own America's election cycle because you had money. Um, anyway, normally Illuminati back people do that, but Donald did it with his own money. Um, but, um, I don't know if it exists at the moment. Real estate brokers do. I just don't have much understanding of what they are. But um, but a billionaire will just have a person who buys and sells property for them, right? They've got cash. They've got heaps of cash, and they just partner. They just pay someone to buy and sell their properties and increase their net worth. Well. You'll be so good at buying, selling properties for yourself that you'll start a business of doing it for other people. Understand that you'll be the creator, designer, the, the person who does the schematics, person who does the business plan, person who launches the business, finances the business, puts all the systems, the networks, the computers, the accounting, all the systems in the business, get the business flourishing, get it moving, get it marketed, get it positioned, get it branded, get it pumping, and then you walk away. And then you start the next one. You do, 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 do and then walk away. You start the next one. You're such an excellent judge of character. You've such an excellent gift of like I've got, and you're moving in such excellence that you can pick a total stranger like you and just know that person's potential. If you sat down and did one of these blueprints on on your two uh, on your two people that have uh, got the top two positions in the interview, and you just sat me down or sat yourself down and did two blueprints, but when you saw the potentials of both, you say, okay. Now you interviewed this for me, but I actually need someone to run my New York modeling agency. And from what's on your blueprint, you'd be the girl. So I can't give you this Sydney job, but I can give you a uh, uh, modeling agency, uh, uh, agency director in New York. And um, that's up in three months. Uh, my girl is going to be moving from New York to be the international uh, manager, CEO, 
and I'm promoting her in three months, I, I need um, the head of New York. And um, so whenever you're prepared to go, she'll coach and train you into that position. But um, what I see on your blueprint, which is what I'm giving you here, what I see in your blueprint is not this job, but a job a whole lot better. And um, the girl who's second to you, that's not as good as you, she's going to get this job. And I'm sorry, I can't give you this job. You need to go and do that other job. And, and I've got a feeling, you know, God has told me that um, you've always wanted to live in New York. So it's sort of your dream come true too. And, um, right, and uh, the girl will be crying or really overcome. And said, so we'll set you up in the apartment. We'll, we'll uh, have two months training or as long a training as you like. One of uh, the agency's uh, sub-managers will train you into the manager's job if you're not ready for it by the time our manager leaves. Um, and uh, got a really good team there. The sub-manager could do it, uh, your job, but they won't be ready, I can perceive, for another two years to take over. But you're ready now. You just need to be able to walk in it and understand it. And then you get the second girl and you say you got the job because you saw it on the blueprint. Uh, it's amazing when you're operating in God that the right sort of people will come to you. Um, so um, can you imagine, imagine getting all the questions answered, getting one of your staff to go through and pick, pick the best 10 Right, and you're doing high class, you know, two hundred thousand dollars a year jobs, and then you sit down someone like me, and you pay them fifteen hundred dollars, and they go through the ten people, and not only do they pick the person for the job, but they pick four positions in your international businesses out of those ten applicants. So nearly every applicant that's up to the grade to get to that top ten they actually get, you know, half of them get positions in your company. So every time you advertise for someone, you get five uh, job placements for other places. Um, so um, these are all things I understand in God. And uh, I'm one of the most exquisite, heavy hidden Christians in the world. And in, in um, when my John Lennon book becomes a bestseller, which God has told me will, when that becomes, there won't be hardly any Christian in the world with more power and influence than me. So I'm not just this um, not well-dressed, not expensive little Christian guy that, you know, is saying, hey, we'll do a deal. You don't pay me and I don't pay you. I'm not just this in, in two years' time. Or if you watch the 32 hours of John Lennon videos, that it's going to become a book, um, you know, uh, who would even put their draft copy of the book live on the internet so someone else can print it and publish it? Um, who would even dare to do that? So someone would read the book and then come back and watch all the videos live. Um, like, that's crazy. Um, no one does that, but, you know, someone like me does. So um, I don't know what my point was. Um, so real estate broker. Um, now, here's another one. You understand this, but I don't. I don't need to understand. I sort of get understanding as I go. But um, but um, you're going to run a talent agency. So I'd imagine that's actors, probably writers, um, actors, probably writers, um, script writers. Um, but a talent agency, you're going to run an agency for actors and writers and whatever, uh, you know, uh, models, I don't know, um, a modelling agency would run models, but um, girls that, um, you know, do promotions and PR and stuff could be part of a talent agency, I'd imagine. Um, but you're going to run and own a really good talent agency. Um, so I think you know what that is. Um, and we'll do some research on that if you don't know. Number 13, child sponsor and development, child sponsor and development NGO, Africa and Asia. So this is your charitable, one of your charitable branches. 
you're going to um, look after children, right? Orphans, that's a huge thing in Africa. You're going to have orphans, like, I don't want to bust your cap, but, you know, a Christian woman over there has 30,000 orphans um, that uh, runs a Christian ministry. She's got, she, oh no, she, she's got 10,000 orphans. She serves 30,000 meals a day in her Christian ministry. She's the most exquisite Christian I know in the world. And uh, I did prophecies. I've done five prophecies over her life, her husband and her children's life. And she really, really loves me. So the woman I feel is the most, the best Christian woman in the world. She knows me personally and really loves me. Uh, so I'm just not a normal guy. Although I've got been really abused and really heavily traumatised in my life, and I, I've I've just got really bad wounds and really hurting. And um, like any satanic ritual abuse, I don't know if you know about that. I don't remember the abuse that happened to me, but it happened and it seriously messed me up. And I'm with some real high class professional counsellors, but it's taking a lot of time to work through stuff. Um, and I'm hoping it'll all be done in the next 18 months, but could go for 10 years, I don't know. But in Africa and Asia, you're going to be looking after children and single mothers, and you're going to do a better job than the Christians. And uh, by that time, you will be a Christian, but uh, a lot of Christians can be ineffective and stuff, um, but... Um, you're going to um, do like major charitable work through Africa. And, uh, and you're also going to do development work in Africa. In other words, I've seen a guy present at a church that I was going to that I just left. That He had a 44-gallon drum and he's built something that you can plant 100 seedlings in this 44-gallon drum to sort of expand. And so... You can grow a, f a hundred tomato plants in this drum and what would take 12 by 12 feet, you can do in a drum this round. So rather than planting 12 by 12 feet, you can do in one drum. So 12 by 12 feet can have 20 of these things and have 20 times the capacity, growing capacity. Well, that doesn't sound much and one of these drums is $60. It doesn't sound much, but when you haven't got land and land is expensive, to be able to grow 20 times as much with the same space, it just can totally transform a really poor uh, village. And certainly an orphanage can grow all their food instead of buying it, uh, would just totally transform the cost for food. Um, and these are the sort of things you, you not only provide the money for the orphanage, but technologies being put into these villages and totally transform them. And um, I can do that. I'm going to spend a lot of time in Africa and this is something I would do and this is something on my blueprint and this is something we'd be doing together. And the truth, if the truth is known, right, you, you're saying to me, why in the hell? Just one reference on a website what's his catch what's his end game what's he in this for what does he want right those things are all my friends in america are contacting me um so um all my friends are in america i've got i only brook on my profile and it'll be you you'll be my only two friends in the flesh in in australia um, um Wait a sec, um, I've just got to check something. Um, we're so long, someone's sending a message, but he's one of my most important friends. I want to see what he said. Um, Yeah. 
Um, so uh, I'll give. Um, uh, so um, so now I just discovered this because here's the funny thing. I don't know what I'm going to say in the next sentence when I'm doing this. Nothing is scripted. Nothing's planned. The only scripted thing is this list of 20. But what I'm going to say about this 20, I've got no idea. And not until here did I get the real idea of why I invest hundreds and hundreds of hours into you for nothing. Besides being a friend, but even a friend, you know, like why would I invest all my time and expertise and knowledge and wisdom that I've learned as a Christian over 40 years studying the Bible better than any Christian in the world, uh, meeting Jesus face to face hundreds and hundreds of times, spending all sorts of suffering in the world to get the character I have. Um, why would I do all this for you? Because this and you and me are going to do this. We're going to help villages in Africa stop being poor and all the suffering childless children, we're going to look after them all. We're going to give them great education, get them all to university and bring them out of poverty. And together we're going to do the same thing. It's on mine and it's on yours and all the things we do for you and all the things I do for me, a lot of the money's going to go to there. So, if I make you mega rich and help you get mega rich, um, this is something that really turns your heart and really, really motivates you. Um, and it really motivates me. And so it will motivate me to do all the things I'm going to do myself. And it will motivate me to help you do all the things that you'll do so that we'll do this together. And so I've got an airline pilot uh, who's, who's the guy that was just messaging me. And I just did a five hour interview that's part of my book with him. And um, so he talks to me for an hour or two a day. Um, and I had to tell him I can't be ready for an hour. Um, I got an airline pilot, I'm gonna have 200 crew traveling with me, doing things all around the world and preaching in stadiums and stuff. I'm gonna have about 200 staff with me in this plane. And this airline pilot is, we're gonna either own, uh, he's for, he, Whatever plane he's the captain of and has flied for 10 years, whatever that plane is, it sits 200 people, that, I don't know, 747, whatever it is. Um, we're going to have one of them leased around and he's just going to fly me around. Well, uh, when we're flying and doing things and trips to Africa, you'll be in that plane with him and me and we'll be going doing things in Africa. So... Or you could say, oh, this is garbage, man. You're just full of it. So whatever. I could be wrong or I could be right. <laughs> uh, number 14, um, government position, government advisor. So Trump and every government has uh, professionals that give consult, consultants and advisors to the government. So... I'd imagine Labor has theirs and Liberal has theirs, speaking Australia. But um, I think um, I, th I think that this could be even be more than just Australia. You could be, you could be a consultant flying over to consult the American government, but um, but uh, you're going to be one of them, and so. Uh, that's like your business coaching, life coaching, and uh, all your coaching, prophetic sort of stuff. Uh, the other thing, as a prophet, you can tell them their future. And you can tell them what decisions to make. You know, when, when you're like me, someone can ask, should I um, move my office to Washington or move my head office to New York? <coughs> Takes one second for me to say New York. <coughs> And that's God's pick for them. So that's where they're meant to go. And it takes one second. It's really easy. So decisions that will be hard for them, you know, there's good reasons for Washington. There's good reasons for New York. It takes one second for me to say this is the right one. So you'll be able to advise people on decisions. So 15, you're going to have a PR company. So you're going to have your internet marketing company and advertising agency company. And you're going to have a PR company. And I, I I'm, could be wrong, but I think you know what 
our PR company does. It just promotes a brand or a person. And, um, and so you'll be running a PR company. Number 16, you'll be a writer. Um, you're, I, I can see you writing books. And I can also be, see you doing freelance um, articles and guest posts in, uh, in, in newspapers and magazines and um, being like a writer that just contributing writer, um, a regular column in a magazine, um, a writer of books. But I think you're going to um, get free advertising and free press and free um, brand understanding of your name and your businesses by just writing, being a writer who writes for free, but as people know your name, it just builds your brand, your brand name. And you're gonna write some really good stuff in all sorts of places. And it's just gonna be fun, it's just gonna be sport for you. It's what you'll do for fun. So that's number 16. Number 17, you're gonna be a public speaker um, on a whole range of subjects, but um, on uh, achieving your dreams uh, um, and business and um, all sorts of things. And uh, you'll develop them as you develop as a person, you become more successful, you become an expert on, uh, on quite a number of subjects and you'll speak on those subjects. Number 18, um, and this will be fun, it'll be interesting for you. Uh, you'll be a podcaster, I don't know. Uh, you'd know what a podcast is. I don't know if you subscribe to any. I really don't have time to listen to anyone's podcasting. And most things Christian actually bore me because, um, you know, I hear, I hear more about the Bible and more supernatural revelation and knowledge from God every single day than uh, most Christians hear in five years. And so um, most of the Christian teachers, most of the Christian heavy hitters, big players who go from conference to conference all around the world, most of them I find really boring. Uh, because they're not even doing the things, you know. Um, in January, I got rewarded with 6,000 angels. Um, three weeks ago, I went to 60 million. Uh, so a, an example of that, um, um, and, you, you know, I can, because I'm transparent and honest and you can tell I'm genuine, loving, caring, compassionate, and nearly... Every one of your 10 features, I am, they're all in me. So everything I've said about you, and they'll be listed under here, everything I've said about you is in me too. And mostly when I do character traits, I'm calling out things that are in me because my intuition can say she's similar that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Right, so um, it's going to come a day where people that come against me get killed by an angel. Um, and uh, and uh, I'll be so fiercely loyal that someone attack one of your brands or does a, a, a trash piece on one of your companies. And I'm so got much authority over angels, one of those angels just knock the person out. Either kill them or just like totally put them in a wheelchair or just like knock them out. And um, witchcraft can do things through demons and and, and like powerful stuff, they do a curse or something and bang, someone gets knocked out. Well, God can do the same thing. Uh, a wicked person who's done a wicked thing, um, I can just give the nod to an angel and the angel just go and do anything to him. So whatever witches can do, I can do, but the people who cop it off me um, really deserve it. And they're not going to really learn anything until it happens to them. Um, some of us learn our best things through suffering. So podcaster, now what's interesting about that is um, a lot of podcasters are just interviewing really heavy hitters and the people listening that subscribe just love the guests and uh, if you're doing a good podcaster, they, they actually love the person doing the interview more than the guests because... Um, what would make a very good interviewer is the knowledge of the interviewer and the ability and the talents and the reach 
and the depth and the knowledge and the wisdom and the, the smarts and the integrity and the savvy of the podcaster himself, right? Um, I make a very good interview of Saints of Heaven because I've got an extremely good knowledge of the Bible, not knowledge, but wisdom, practical knowledge that works. And so I, so I ask pretty good questions of the heavy hitters in the Bible and the books are very interesting. So Mary Magdalene's books are very good. Um, number, uh, I can't read mine right. I think they're 17. Uh, public speaker, um, you're going to have a TV show host, like an Oprah Winfrey show. You're going to be um, host the show. Um, so that'd be like a podcaster, which is like radio. Your TV show host may be the same thing, that instead of interviewing people over voice over radio, um, uh, you may be interviewing people like Oprah uh, on a TV show. So that's uh, number uh, 18. Uh, 19 was podcasted, so I've got them out of the thing. And the last one is um, um, uh, number 20 is a branding builder I've got. So you're going to be an expert on promoting and building brands, which is a combination of PR uh, their website, uh, their press releases, their advertising, their marketing, their training, their commitment to excellence, their after sales service, right? All these things go into developing a tremendous brand, right? Apple is a tremendous brand. It's got quality, it's got great sales. So like the sales, the, the, the service that Apple gives is second to none. There's nothing in the world as good as their service. Um, the quality is nothing like their service. That's why PCs are half the price. Um, so you'd be able to brand, build excellence and build powerful brands and uh, me and you will be doing the same thing in that one too so that's been really extensive and um it's um um uh, you you'll probably be able to see at the end of this that we'll have a lot of, lot to talk about um and you know to be honest it could take six months or a year to really uh meet once every two weeks or once a month to really like talk about what do you mean? How am I going to, how am I going to do this? What, give me a half an hour on how we're going to do this. Give me half an hour on how we're going to do this. And where's the money for this going to come from? And uh, there'll be a lot of questions and there may be not a lot of questions, but I've said a lot there and um, I wish sometimes I'd get a turn my, my phone. What you're hearing is my phone notifications, but, Sometimes it gets, uh, some people just send so many messages once in a while and uh, just annoy the videos. Um, so here was someone I had an hour and a half phone call with and he watches every video of mine and comments and uh, he, he looked at every Facebook post and comments. He not only encourages me on what wisdom I share in the video and on the Facebook post, but he also encourages all the uh, listeners of the videos and readers of the Facebook um, um, uh, to uh, really listen to this and do what Matthew says because he's really smart. And so a lot of I read a lot of the comments on my favourite um, people on YouTube that I follow. I read a lot of the comments to see their feedback. So he's really helpful because. He, he encourages me, he tells me what I'm doing is a good thing and shares what's good about what my video was or what my um, post on Facebook was. But he also encourages and helps teach the people who are listening to me. And he's just doing that because he wants to support me. Um, 
and just just not paying him or anything. And um, and the same thing, same thing with me with you. I just want to. I, I guess the best way to explain it is, I just want to. You know, you see a boxer. I don't know if you. I'm really into boxing movies. Not boxing. Going to boxing. I've never been to a boxing match, but. Cinderella Man and um, Muhammad, uh, Cinderella Man and um, and Rocky and stuff. I used to see Muhammad Ali fight, um, but um, in a boxing corner, you have the coach who tells the boxer he's fading with his left. He's doing this with left every time he every time he hits with his right, he drops his left. So you know, block his right and smash him in uh, up under his left, you know, and he's, he's seeing what the other boxer's opponent's doing and he's coaching his boxer on how to defeat him. So he's in his corner. That's called, you know, I want someone in my corner. I don't know if you heard that cliche. Um, and then he's got um, a medic and the medic jumps in and cuts and, and, and stitches and fixes up and gets all the blood off him and keeps him healthy from getting his face smashed. So two of them are in the corner and they're really essential to the boxer, right? I want to be in your corner for the rest of your life. And um, when you do meet your husband, when you do meet the man that you're going to spend your life with, he's going to have no issue with me, right? He's going to not have a problem. He's going to love me. He's going to love the person you are. He's going to love the effect I have of him. He's going to have no jealousy of him, of me, uh, you know. And he's got another. And he's probably going to. He's going to probably going to be one of the people working in my ministry and my businesses that you're going to work with and interact with. And then, then he's going to meet you, and then have eyes for you. And then he's one of my people that work in hundreds of people that are going to be working with me or thousands. And he's going to maybe feel it's just such a pleasure that I'd let him date you. Right? And he's just watched you from afar for a couple of years. And finally we do something in Africa together where we're both together. And, um, and he's on the mission team that's doing it. And uh, he meets you for the first time and he's always known about you. And then chemistry hits and, you know, the love arrows get shot at each other, Cupid's arrows, and suddenly you're dating each other and he can't believe himself and, um, you know, you can't believe yourself. And, um, you know, you thought you had a lot of compassion. He's got five times as much. And um, you thought you wanted to save Africa and, and, um, and get poverty out of Africa and, parts of Asia, he wants to take poverty out of the whole world. And um, what you're doing in Africa and Asia is extensive, uh, but he wants to do that for the whole world and be the CEO of a company, NGO, that does it for the whole world. And, you know, I'm just fantasising here, just making something up. So, so your husband takes over everything that you're doing, everything that I'm doing, but expands it by five and runs the show. And so, of course, you love him because your Africa, Asia, children sponsor um, total um, poverty development work in these poor countries is one of your main drivers of why you do everything. And your husband's like five times more experienced and knowledgeable about doing what really turns you on. So, of course, you'd just be awestruck at this guy and um, he'd be the only guy worthy of getting you um, and uh, you know I don't look at um, you know um, Michael the head of all the angels that work on the earth the, the angel that's in charge of all of them lives in my house um, but um, he, he's a good friend of mine and you know before he came to live in my house um, I need a lot of protection at the moment because there's a lot of trouble around me, um, but they can't get near me because of my protection. Um, but um, 
he was telling that my John Lennon books is, is one book, but there's five books in the series. Um, and uh, he said that that's going to be bigger than Harry Potter. So if that is, that's probably going to be 100 million copies. So, you know, when we're having trouble getting a publisher because it speaks against the Illuminati and the real evil wickedness in the world, and one of those evil wickedness people have got to publish it. So I'm putting pressure on them in a spiritual way to force their hand to help me. So, but whenever that happens, and when, it's going to take a year to edit. It's so big and so extensive. Um, it's going to take a year to edit. So even if they offer me the contract now, it's still be a year, eight months before it comes. But when that comes and that 100 million comes, I'm never going to have an issue for money because I've got so many business ideas and uh, seeking arrangement and, and this company, I think you'd be on Seeking Arrangement, you're so professional, but this company I found you on and Seeking Arrangement, I'm going to bring out something better than that and fairer than that and, and that works better than that um, and, uh, and so many other businesses. So uh, once I get some cash flow going, uh, the business ideas that I've got will never run out. And um, so I'm going to be really wealthy but this thing turns me on. I not only want these um, poor kids and poor mothers and poor country and poor villages to see prosperity, but I want them not to be Muslims but Christian, not into witchcraft and, 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 and ancient blooming, uh, you know, grandfathers and, and, and fathers and channeling dead people. Um, but uh, I want everything revolutionised and totally Jesus and totally awesome. So I want to change their faith, change their living standard, change their success rate, change their prosperity. And, uh, and uh, if your husband, for instance, was the guy who's going to head up our Asia and Africa and then head up the world thing as we move into the world, of course, I'd love him. Of course, he'd love me. And of course, you'd love him because he's running the show bigger than you ever dreamed of. And um, so with that, I'll let you go. And um, you can see I was in no rush. And I uh, hope that that didn't uh, bore you in any way. And I uh, hope uh, that you've got the time in the morning uh, to watch it. And um, please take your time. Uh, and uh, And... Don't run away from me. If this is, you know, half the people I've done this for and they weren't this long or extensive, but half the people I've done this didn't talk to me afterwards. It was just so big that they just couldn't believe it, that they're just so gobsmacked. Please listen to this, reflect on it, and then write me an email and uh, ring me up and give me your feedback. God bless.